Hello everyone, today we're going to be playing around with the ChatGPT OpenAI application. We're going to be using it to sort of test if it can actually unemploy us or if we can still do the stuff it's trying to do but faster. To do this, what we're going to do is have ChatGPT generate a Ruby on Rails application while I start a timer. Uh, after it's done generating it, I'm then going to try and build the same thing. Hopefully I can beat the time uh, or at least generate some better code. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and get started though. I'll start the timer and then I'll start typing because I'm going to count this as it's time. I'm going to say generate a Ruby on Rails application uh, with posts that have a title, body, and file attachments. And we'll go ahead and we'll run that and it'll start doing all of the, uh, the commands and stuff. Now it does seem to be going through the entire process this time, which is pretty cool. So that means that when I do it, I'll have to start from scratch. Uh, last time I tried this, it got hung up on like creating a, a blog post or whatever. I have had to try this a couple times. I didn't feel like it was totally fair uh, because, you know, I'm not going to hold it against chat GPT if I don't know what words to ask it. Although in, in general, if this is going to replace people, it's probably going to have to, uh, you know, resolve those problems. All right, so it seems like its suggestions are to generate a model, to generate some migrations, and to add attachments to the uh, migration, okay. Then it wants to do a DB migrate, and wants to open the post model and add that it has the attachment. Uh, then it says do the controller and the views. So let's say generate the controller and, it'll well, generate the controller for these posts. We can then, uh, after that, we'll tell it to generate the views. I don't want to tell it to uh, do this all in one because it might get confused, but we'll go ahead and we'll see what it's doing. Open the post and add the following code to it. I don't know why this is necessary. Uh, oh, I guess because it's generating like uh, the controller on its own. So it looks like it's generating the actions for creating, reading, and updating. Oh, did it do destroying? It doesn't look like it did destroying. Uh, add a destroy action. We'll go ahead and we'll run that. We'll want to make sure that this is actually doing what we want it to, of course. Uh, config route RB. Yeah, that seems fine. Now it looks like uh, this has all of these. It's doing the resources for the post. I don't know why it needs to specify that. Okay, whatever. Uh, so we have that. Now let's uh, generate the views for the posts. There we go. Now, this is going to be a little bit strange. It's generating the views. I didn't even know you could do this. This is actually interesting. So if you run this command, it'll do the index show new and edit actions for you out of the box. Uh, looks like the index one. Oh, I guess this is just doing like uh, the generic actions based on what's in the controller, maybe. And you still have to put in the information. OK, that makes a lot more sense. So this is just looping through everything that seems fine now it's going to the show page which it's not using the partials but that makes sense because this is like frozen in time in like 2021 before we had rail 7 probably i think rail 7 is when we started using the partials uh, which is a little bit cleaner now it does look like it's using a form for the post that's also fine i'm going to type continue because i think it got confused uh, there we go. So it's going to add in the second snippet of code down here, which looks a little bit weird, but you get the idea. Um, what else does it have? It looks like it's doing the edit action now, also without a partial. That's a little strange because I think these are handled uh, slightly differently, but we'll see. So yeah, okay. So it looks like it's a little bit broken here too. <laughs> it's throwing this in the code block now. Okay, so that looks like it was about 339. Um, we do have the attachments for the files here. We do have uh, some basic stuff for some of the views. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to try throwing this into an application. I think we can pretty much look at this and see it's generating like HTML. It's doing a, a basic loop through the iterations. This is for the index page. So if we come up to the index action up here, which should be our all posts, it looks like it doesn't have all of the posts being set into the at posts. So the index action in this doesn't actually exist. So that's a problem that's gonna be broken. Uh, but we'll count it. We'll say that was 339, right? 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and start my own. I'm gonna have to deal with the rails generation time here, uh, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, because of course it doesn't actually have to run the commands, but we'll just we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll give it a shot. So I'll start the timer and then we'll see what I can come up with in three minutes and 40 seconds. So we'll go one and we'll go rails new video. Go ahead and run that. We can then CD into video and we can do a rails g scaffold post give each post a title and body of type text and we can do a rails db colon migrate and we can do a rails db uh, colon oh i guess we don't need the seed commands we can just do a uh, migrate we'll go ahead and we'll run that cd into the video application run our generators and all of that go ahead and run this in a code dot do a rails s to start the server Rails S to start the server, bring over the VS code. We can then come in here to the host.rb model, host, host.rb model. In here, we have to do a has one attached uh, file. We can then come into the post controller, right? Post controller, scroll down to the bottom right here. We can do our comma, what did I call it? I think I called it a file, comma, file come into the underscore form that HTML that ERB in the form we have to do another div the div needs to include a form dot label for the file it needs to include a form dot oops file field for the file and then we can come into the uh, underscore post and in here we can do another p tag right this p tag can then have uh, similar to this. Yes, that looks fine. We're using Copilot here. One AI seems fair against another. Come over to localhost port 3000. We have to come into our routes. I don't think it's set a root, but we'll do that ourselves. We'll say post controller index action, save that. Come over here, wait for that to save. Now we can refresh, new post, test, case, choose a file. Uh, I'll just grab this tab index PNG, create the post. Now it's telling us we have to run this bin rails active storage. So we'll say bin slash rails active underscore storage colon install command. That'll add active storage and then go ahead and do a rails s. We can refresh. We can run our pending migrations. Come in here, test case, give this another file, grab the tab index, create the post that gives us the file. Let's come over to the underscore post partial. And if we wanted to change this to an image, uh, we would have to make sure it was an image, but then we can do a image tag for the post.file with a width of uh, 300 and a height of 250 maybe, or we could just say 300. It's fine, doesn't matter, save that come over here. And if we refresh the page, it's gonna throw an error uh, because of this semicolon that I have here, that's fine. We can refresh the page, there's our image. Uh, we could also make this a link to this image. Uh, of course, you do want to verify this is an image, but then we can do a post.file as the destination. Refresh that, click it, takes us to the image. I feel like at this point, we've probably proven our superiority to the machines. Uh, we have this, we can go back, we can look at all of our posts. Uh, we can create a new post with more words. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is, this is working exactly how you would expect it to. Now, of course, if you try to create another post uh, that you know needs to validate the files, right? So that's something where if I come in here and I try and upload this RAR file, for example, I create the post, that's not gonna work, right? It will work as a download, but the image tag doesn't really make sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I, hopefully this was interesting. Like I, I love this chat GPT thing, but it is also really funny seeing people like, oh, it's gonna replace software developers. I think it's, it's helpful, just like GitHub Copilot helped me when I was working there. Um, but you'll notice that like, it's not, it's not gonna do what you want it to, because it doesn't know what you want it to do. Uh, you're going to have to be able to predict human, um, I guess like human decision making, which is something you can probably come up with, but then you're also going to need like human creativity, uh, the, the business knowledge, uh, the like market knowledge for who you're trying to sell this to. Uh, and like, you know, the creativity alone, you go, go make an AI that's creative. Like you're going to be stuck asking yourself what even is creativity for the next 10 years, probably. Uh, so it is helpful. It's, it's really cool when it works. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes it, it does some weird stuff. Uh, sometimes you have to know when it's done. Uh, that's the other part of it, which I, you, you need to be a developer to know when you're done developing, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, th hopefully this is interesting. It's, it's, uh. It's a work in progress. Again, this is like a, a research preview or whatever. I'm sure they'll 
I'm sure they'll charge us like an arm and a leg in the future for something like this. Uh, but as of right now, it is a cool tool to go play around with. You can use it chat.openai.com slash chat. Uh, I don't think you need to like, you know, sign up or anything. I mean, you have to make an account, but I don't think you need to like request access. I think it's just access for everyone. But yeah, hopefully this is interesting uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.